Kabul's. Kabul is a city of widows. Thousands of women left to manage families on their own have had to break the conservative traditions of their culture and go out to work. The Taliban government won't let them do that. The main street is just rubble after almost two decades of war. The new government has announced swift and harsh justice, and now no role for women outside the home. The Taliban's interpretation of Islam forbids any images of living things. The senior figures in the regime refuse to appear on television. But off camera, the man who will almost certainly be president, Mullah Rabani, explained their policy on education for girls. We have said time and again, we will honor whatever rights have been given by Islam to women. We have no intention of stopping women from being educated, but we say that this education should be only along Islamic lines. It means that girls can learn only to become housewives, but in this city of shadows, opponents of the government have to be anonymous as well. A young girl who lost her foot in a rocket attack weeps as she talks of the education she's lost. She wanted to become a doctor, but her school has already been closed down. And the family's income has been cut in half as her mother can't work either. A UN envoy to Afghanistan has held his first talks with the Taliban since they seized the former president from a UN refuge and killed him. He confirmed that the issue of women's rights is an obstacle to Afghanistan's development. We interrupted already programs in UNICEF because of the women issue. We hope, however, that this does not remain a dialogue where each side is sitting on principles that, that we come to practical solutions. If there is no moderation for the Taliban's extreme position on women, peace will have come to Afghanistan at the price of profound changes to such. After the chaos of recent days, the presidential palace is now closed to outsiders, while the six-man interim government imposed their way of life on 15 million people. Proclamations on the new order come via Kabul radio, which otherwise plays only Islamic holy readings. Taliban roadblocks are festooned with confiscated cassette tape. They're afraid of any cultural influences outside their strict interpretation of the Quran, Islam's holy book. <laughs> Women are not seen unless covered from head to toe, and men have been told to grow beards. It can only be a matter of time before these revolutionaries in their trademark black turbans parade a thief in the streets of the capital to have his hand cut off. Their leaders refuse even to have their picture taken. The only face-to-face -face television interview any have done was by their military commander the day before he was killed last week on the road to Kabul. Mullah Borjan told me that one and a half million people have been martyred to establish the way of Muhammad. They'll not allow any system other than Ifar. Trade is underway again. The roads are open, and here at the Alibaba Oil Company, they know that at roadblocks, gunmen won't demand illegal taxes as they did under the old regime. In one restaurant, they welcome the Taliban for a simple reason. After they've eaten, Taliban fighters pay the bill. Much of Afghanistan is now at peace under a government which demands Islamic order but provides security which the warlords of the past could not. While the Taliban move more of their heavy armor out of Kabul on the road to the north to pursue the remnants of the army of the former government.